Hi everybody, Debbie from Debbie's Crafty Hands here. Um, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, it's not technically crafting, but it is on the artistic side of things. Now, neurographic art. I first saw this um, with Gail Gustinelli. Um, she is an American working from Montana and I've been following her channel for quite some time and very inspirational lady so if you get a chance hop over and tell her that Debbie's from Debbie's Crafty Hands sent you over um, Neurographic Art is basically a very relaxing technique that you can change up out as the mood takes you now this is an example um, that I did a little while back you need to go off the edge of the page so make sure when you're doing it that your page size is something that you can manage so if you don't want to do a huge great A4 size um, to start with um, I've just got myself a little art book um, and working from that you first of all you do your lines from side to side working down to the end you can go diagonally across so I'll, I'll show you in a moment how it, it's formatted then on each junction you need to do a little u-shape facing out from the junction a little nodule shall we say but also once you've done your squiggly lines your straight lines your curly lines whatever lines you decided to do pop some geometric shapes in so these shapes are hidden within the pattern but they're also quite obvious so you, one circle there one circle there one circle there circle there and a circle there so they're hidden in plain sight um, and it's just fun to color in and draw you can draw lots and then come back and color them in at whatever you know whenever you, the mood takes you so to speak so that that's that one then this is completely different but the same technique and what I've done here instead of um, that way is that better can we see it better so what I've done is I've literally gone around the outside of each of my little cells each time consecutively smaller with different color pens so to me this looks like some sort of road map um, I've only done a couple um, I'd like to do another one with you there's one that was started at the back of the book I can find it so this is basically the starting point you have um, so you draw your lines from the side of the page across the page up and down side to side squiggle 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 freehand try not to think about it too much I think that's the the basis of this it's don't think about it just do um, and then you'll probably find that the patterns come off more in in your own what's the word how how you're feeling because it depends on how you're feeling on the day as to how it comes out sometimes so it's quite an emotional um, thing today I'm not going to do circles I'm going to do oblongs and I'm going to trace around either the inside or the outside of my dies So to start with, I'm going to use a pencil so that I can 
rub out any lines that I'm not happy with um, and I'm going to try not to think about it um, and just do my squiggly lines so I'm going to start from here move over to here start from here move over to here and so and so forth you could do straight lines you can do squiggly lines free flow until you think you've done enough Now that, that's very light, but I will be going over it. Now I've got my basic shape, I'm going to go over it with a fine liner. You can go over it with a gel pen, or um, this liner I've got here is Fine Liner Graphic, and it's 0 0.8, which is... I think plenty wide enough. So this one didn't quite go to the edge and as I'm drawing over them you will see that it's coming to life. Trying to follow my line. Ooh, it went right over here. And round. Goodness that was a curvy one. And joined up there. So while I'm filling this in, is there any questions that you'd like to know? Um, I know we're not live, but I can answer questions on the chat if you'd like to, you know, pose them, and I can come back to you. I'll always try and answer your comment. Um, may take a, a little while to get to you but I will endeavour to get to all comments going forward so keep going until you've covered all your lines I was telling you about the cats um, yeah we've got one called Fennel she was badly injured uh, she's an adult cat we think around about seven years old and if you're living in the Hertfordshire area and you can give a home to her. I'm sure she would really appreciate it. Bless her little cotton socks. Or little furry paws. So. Where are we going to put our squares? You can put them whatever angle you want. Jaunty angles or. Now once again I'm going to do it in pencil. And then I'll go over it. So this time I'm going to go on the outside. Now sometimes these dies have got little nodules on the end and that's what was moving it so you have to be careful on the side of the dies where it's um, connected to another die. So I'm going to do a couple of big ones. This time I'm going to do the inside. Just to change up the sizing. Oh, don't move on me. Come on, stay still. I've only got one side to go now. That's better. Okay. And I'm going to do a couple of little ones. And you can interconnect your um, shapes as well. So overlap them. And I think one up here. This little bit here was where the, it slipped, so I'm just going to rub that out. 
we don't want to get that confused with something else. So now I'm going to do my squares. Now if you wanted to outline your shapes in a different colour, then that's fine. Um, but they will stand out a little bit more. I have to move my book around a little bit to get to this edge. I find it very relaxing. Too relaxing, I'm forgetting to speak. Here we go. Your little nodules you can do again in a different colour. So you could do each section in a different colour, bring the changes. I'm doing this this part in black, but I will change up my colour for the nodules so it's easier for you to see. So let's see what colour should we do our nodules? Uh, what colours are we So I'm going to use my, my red gel pen, just to make sure it's working okay, yep that's working okay. So you want to do little blobs at your junctions, I mean the devotees to neurographic art would say you have to do a U shape. Um, I don't know quite what the reason behind that is, but have a slight curve going outwards from your nodule, working your way along. Um, but little triangle works. It's just a, a point of leaving the page and then once you've done all the way around the page you go in and work your way in. Now you will probably colour in and find you've forgotten to do a nodule so you might have to go back on it a bit. I've found that before, not quite got that to the edge so I'll put that onto the edge. I'm looking forward to this evening. Um, a shout out to um, my hospice ladies, um, where the newer ladies, such as myself, to the, the hospice are having a night out together. And there'll be six of us. So, a shout out to the girls. I won't say your names because I haven't asked your permission to put you on the channel, but you know who you are. So I'm doing these little nodules. It comes together fairly quickly. I mean, you can pick it up, put it down. It's one of those pieces of work that you can do it as you feel like it. You can stop and start. So, so. So. Now this junction here, got, it's a junction but it's a long one so you can't really curve it. It's a bit, a bit tricky. To work along in the smaller sections first and then go to the bigger sections and then you're not so likely to miss things. So this one's got lots of intersections here. That one, that one. 
this one's like Spaghetti Junction. That one. Because this is such a small little triangle, I've just coloured the whole lot in because it connects with so many. Um, this one. Right, so you get the idea on that. Now, you can colour in pencil, like that one. Um, this one was done with felt tip. Um, today I'm going to use my Illustrator Spectrum Noir. Um, and because I think it might bleed through the page, I put a bit of card. Oh, saved by the bell. I think that might be the shopping arriving. Um, so I'm going to use the brush end. And we'll start colouring in some sections. Um, I find it easier to go around the outside and then fill it fill in already planned what I'm going to be wearing tonight. I hope it's going to be warm enough. We're out for an Indian, Indian restaurant locally. Not tried it before so I'm looking forward to trying that. I will probably have a korma because I'm not very brave when it comes to the hot food. Um, and I do like my paswashi naans. Let me know what your favourite takeaway or restaurant to go to is. So, it's, uh, yeah, this one's getting a little bit. I yeah, must have used this one quite a lot because it's fading quite. Colour it in. Okay, so that one. What I try not to do is have the same colour next to each other so when you're going round your colouring so the next colour I'm going to use is a pink which is a Crayola super tip which is a nice pink colour so again go around the edges before you fill in the middle Some of these big blocks take quite a bit of ink, but they're the small and the large. I think it gives it character and helps it flow. So you've got the different size cells. Um, just my pink. So we don't. And what I try and do is put the pens I've used to the other side so I know that I've gone through them and then come back to them um, so this one's an orange that's called amber and that again it's a, a spectrum noir one and I'm just going to follow the bottom line until I come to the end and then come back and follow the next line along Bananas? Green bananas. Ripen at home. I think they may take a while to ripen. 
Okay. Well, we'll stick them with the other ones in the fruit bowl when they ripen. The right ones will ripen the other ones. I have my director, editor, all round IT guy sorting out the shopping at the moment. So. I'm on my own! Oh dear! I'm sure I can cope. Right, so we've done purple, pink, orange. Now we're going to go green. And see it taking shape. So you can do just do the nodules and work your way up. Go to the nodules, um, colour in, and then the next line up. Now it's a good job I did put the bit of um, card underneath to protect because I would have drawn all over the edge of the book otherwise. Because it's coming up over the edge. We've got our green. Wow, colour blue. Shall we do blue? Yeah, what? Well, no, let's do. No, do a brighter blue. We don't want to. looking out the window earlier and we've got quite a few lovely birds in the garden. Got a dunnock and a blackbird, a robin, uh, it's either a great tit or a cold tit, I'm not really sure which way round they are. Um, um, we haven't filled the feeders up but they still keep coming into the garden. Right, we're going to cut the um, show here. I'm going to finish colouring this in um, and show you the finished version or finishing off towards the end because I think you've got the general idea of what we're doing. Um, and how to do it um, so I will see you a couple of seconds for you probably about half an hour for me see you in a minute it was about a second for you but um, most of the afternoon for me um, I've finished all but one which I thought I would uh, finish the last one with you guys so this one I decided is going to be the light green I'm going to colour that one in um, you may notice um, some dots and dashes and crosses and whatnots around the side of the, the colours. And I was playing about and experimenting with different um, mark techniques to define the edges um, and different colours, etc. So we have the slashes which made it look like it's being over sewn we have the crosses which is pretty obvious the cross stitch and we have the dashes which makes it look like a running stitch so it's fun to experiment with your, your different markings around the edges um, to define your boundaries. Oh. I did different colours. Some of them didn't show up as well as I'd hoped they would. Um, we have some silver here, not showing up that well, and down here 
Um, and we have some gold around here for dashes. Then I tried colours on colours, so I did orange on the yellow. And I did a bit of red on the pink and the orange. That doesn't show up that well. Um, so play about and see, because your colours may be lighter than mine. Mine are quite bright and vivid, so to put markings on them you need a really dark colour to show up. Um, the blue showed up quite well. Uh, where can we go with that? I'll show you. So along here. So that, that showed up quite well. It's a very dark blue. But if you say you did the green, let's try the other end. It's a bit floppy, that end. It's not going to show up that well. One, it's not coming out very well because it's a bit dry. But two, it's the colour doesn't come up that well it's in, it, in itself. So have a play, enjoy, relax. This particular technique, I suppose I can call it, neurographic art, just to remind you of the name of it. Um, it's supposed to be mindful I suppose I think that's the right way of putting it it's for relaxing coming out into your own zone just zeroing in on what you're concentrating on um, and it's quite a peaceful thing to do it doesn't have to be purposeful it doesn't have to be for anything just for yourself and for your own interest experiment muck about with it play about with it work with different shapes um we put the the oblongs in so you can just see this one here and this one here this one over here and this one over here but as i say with the circles like the first page they're hidden in plain sight don't notice them straight away you want to look when you do a picture you want to look into the picture and discover and find the shapes and the um patterns and again with my very busy road works here um going in concentric circles it's great fun to do. It's great fun to experiment. Um, I might go in and do some more doodling. I might go in and do some dots down the lines or, I don't know, crosses or zigzags or, or whatever. So just because you've finished it for that that time, it doesn't mean so you can't go back to it and play with it a bit more. Um, Oh yes, yes. Um, I'm got a whispering gallery here saying like the magic eye puzzle type thing. You you look into it and you see more things as you look further into it, deeper into it. Lay it, it, it the the shapes pop out and give it like an almost a three D effect once you've looked into it a little bit. You you see it. Um, I think this one reminds me of colourful fields from the aerial view, like you've got a, a drone looking down on some really pretty colourful farm fields and these are all the fences and things. Um, that's what this reminds me of. So enjoy. You can watercolour, you can pencil colour, you can crayon, you can whatever you like, you can, you know, whatever medium suits you best. Um, Get yourself a little art book so that you can chart your progress. Your first ones may be, meh, I'm not sure, but as you do more and more of them, experiment with different line markings. You can do, you could even do zigzags across the page if you wanted to, um, and different colour patterns. 
thicker lines, thinner lines. And just enjoy, relax and experiment. This sort of thing is to look back and say, I like that, but I didn't like that bit about it. Or that colour was a bit too dark and I wouldn't put that colour with that colour. And it is to play with and learn your palette, learn your colours and in a relaxed and informal way. That, that's how I see it. I mean, you take what from it what you want to take from it um, and enjoy the process. So it's been fun. It's time for me to go now. I um, appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for tuning in. Much love. Bye-bye for now. See you in the next one.